Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello. Good morning, my viewers. You are welcome today, 19 December, edition of the Daily Fountain, the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Almighty God, and our Redeemer, we thank you for the gift of new life. We thank you for your protection and your preservation over our lives and over us as a nation. Thank you for granting us this opportunity to hear your word. Father, we ask that you release your word afresh to us, even that we will not only be the hearers, but the doers of your word, to your own glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The topic of our devotion this morning is his attributes, the attributes of God. And we are taking our text from Isaiah chapter 44, from verse 24 to 28. And I read, Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from thy womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things. The Lord Stretch forth the heavens above. The Lord that spreadeth abroad the earth by himself. The Lord that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make diviners mad. The Lord that turneth wise men backward and make their knowledge foolish. The Lord that confirmed the words of his servants and performed the counsel of his messengers. The Lord that said to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the city of Judah you shall build, and I shall raise the decayed places thereof. The Lord that said to the deep, be dried, and I will dry up the rivers. The Lord that said to Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and I shall perform all my pleasures. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built unto the temple, the foundation shall be laid. From our text this morning, we have a fantastic description of some of the attributes of God from where we read. Number one, He is our Redeemer. Number two, He formed us from the womb. Number three, He made all things. Number four, he stretched forth out the heavens all alone. Number five, he spread abroad the earth all by himself. We can see that in verse 24 of that Isaiah chapter 44. Number six, he forswept the signs of babblers, made divine as mad, Turns wise men backward and make their knowledge foolishness. We can see that in verse 25 of that Isaiah chapter 44. From our text, 
And with all these attributes of God, no man should take God for granted. All that is said of him above is true. You can see that he formed us from our mother's womb. Even the counsel of the wise, he turned it into foolishness. For example, he turned the good and the workable counsel of Ahitophel, the Golanite, into foolishness. When David prayed, Ahitophel refused to forgive David for what David did to Bathsheba, being her grandfather. David pleaded with Ahitophel. With all his counsel, he refused to forgive David. And here, Ahitophel perhaps want to find a way to pay David back in some of the way he think. Brethren, however, he failed to understand one of the attributes of God that God forgives, his forgiveness attributes. David here confesses, he confesses and truly repents. So God forgave him. This made God stood by him again as it was before. Failure to reckon with God. Here, if anyone failed to reckon with this God's attributes, you can see that person will stand in the wrong place with the God. Failure, let me read it again. Failure to reckon with God's attribute can put us in his wrong place side. But let me ask you, have you reckoned with this God's attribute as a redeemer of your soul? Have you ever think how God formed you even in your mother's womb? Look at all the counsels of the wicked, even in our nation, Nigeria. The plan of the devil is by now there will be nothing like Nigeria. For God has frustrated their counsel. And even the wise men God have turned their counsel to foolishness. And that is what God is telling us here. You see, failure to reckon with this God's attribute will put us in a wrong side with God. He is our Redeemer. For example, when you allow God to redeem your, your life, your soul, it will be good and better for you. Let me read. I don't know how you have battered and be broken. I'm hearing the voice of God saying to you, Jerusalem, you shall be rebuilt again. Look at the case of Nineveh in Jonah chapter 1, 1 to 2. I read, Now the word of the Lord come unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it for their wickedness come before me. Look at it. The people of Nineveh came before God. And God desired that Nineveh will not be perished. And he sent a man called Jonah to go and preach to the people of Nineveh. From this passage, brethren, we can see that our Redeemer, not minding the wickedness of the people, still show interest on them by sending Jonah to go and preach to them because he doesn't want them to perish. But in the eyes of Jonah, Jonah want God to destroy the people of Nineveh like it is to us today. When we see those people that are sinning, when we look at sinners, when God is sending us to go and preach to them, so that he will redeem their life and redeem their soul. Even the arm robbers, the fornicators and all these things, we want God to destroy them. And if God acted on that way, we too, we will never be alive today. So that is why God has interest about the people. And he have to send Jonah 
to go and preach to the Nineveh. And also, in Acts of Apostles chapter 9, 1 to 4, and I read, And Saul yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and the desire of him led us to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, he might bound them, bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined him a light from heaven, and he fell on the earth. And he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he also asked a question, who are you, my Lord, that I'm persecuting? Here also in this passage, you can understand and see all that Saul did to the body of Christ. How many people Saul killed? But God is interested in his soul. These attributes of God, our Redeemer, he is interested looking for the soul to redeem. And here, to us, we will like God. We want God, you know, to destroy Saul. But look at the way he encountered Saul on his way to Damascus. And I believe some of us that are alive today, in one way or the other, this is some of the way God encountered us. Many of us that are preacher, we committed a lot of atrocities. But God, in his infinite mercy, encountered us in many ways. So God encountered Saul on his way to Damascus because his soul is important to God. His soul is important to God. As the souls of Nigeria, they are important to God. So, brethren, to us again, we may think that this nation, Nigeria, we will be better again. Like the people of Nineveh, their wickedness has come up unto the Lord. The wickedness of the people in Nigeria. Look at bribery and corruption. Look at bloodshed. Look at a lot of atrocities lie in our nation, Nigeria. Many people will think, that there is nothing again. Let God destroy this nation, Nigeria. But the Bible says, it's not the desire of the Lord to destroy all that he has created. God is interested in the business of saving Nigeria. It is not God's intention to destroy us as a nation. But one thing is needed, even here, that as we are hearing the word of God, we should look into our lives. If there is any areas of our life that we need to surrender unto God, these things we are saying is individually. We should not be looking at anybody. We need to examine our lives and know actually whether we are still in faith. We need to surrender our lives even to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know the areas of your life that you want God to redeem or that you want God to rebuild. Maybe you have been battered and shattered. Maybe you are thinking that God will not even have mercy upon you again. Maybe as you are hearing me, you are planning to go and commit suicide because of what you did. I can hear the voice of God telling you this morning, no, don't kill yourself, I will redeem you. If only, as you are hearing my voice this morning, you can open your hearts. And allow me to come into your heart. Look at all the attacks in the church. God is still interested in those men that are attacking the church. What we need as God sent Jonah to Nineveh. God is sending his messengers. But the problem is that many of us are refusing like Jonah. God is interested in redeeming those souls. If only that we can move after hearing this message and carry the word of God from our Jerusalem, even to the uttermost parts of the world. God will redeem their lives. I don't know, like I ask you, the area of your life that you want God to redeem, that you want God to build up, 
maybe as an individual, maybe as a family, maybe us as a nation, what we need is just allow, ourselves, allow God to come into our lives. Will you surrender your life to the Lordship of our Master Jesus? He is able, no matter whatever. Say, whosoever that comes to him, he will never cast away. He is able to redeem us. He was able to make a new Nigeria. And that is our prayer, that all of us will be alive to see a new Nigeria. So God is calling us this morning for us to come to him, for us to come to him. And when we come, he will rebuke us. Close your eyes, even as you begin to make a decision this morning to come to God. No matter the burdens, no matter the wearing, no matter how far you have battered and shattered, God is there speaking to your heart. Come unto me, all you that are worried with a heavenly load. I will give you rest. Let us pray. And so God in heaven, we thank you again this morning for your word that has come out afresh to us. Thank you, ancient of days, for reminding us all these your attributes, especially the Redeemer of our soul. Help us not to be only the hearers of your word. Help us to be the doers. But you say in the Bible, when we hear your word and do it, it is then you know that we are your disciple. Help us to do this word. Help us to reckon with you so that it will be well with us. And this is our prayers, O oh God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.